Hello boys and girls. In this video I want to quickly wrap up uh, with something that I started two weeks ago. I talked about hiding algebras. Um, this video will be based on it, so I will presume uh, the discussion that we had there where, to remind you, um, we spoke about the, this, uh, this lattice with joins and meets and how we can interpret the terms, like the, the, the algebraic terms, the, the vertices in the lattice as uh, propositions and the join and meet are and and or and the heading algebra was then defined as one where we have this other operation uh, that I will call implication. So um, we had, uh, you know, heading algebra was this bounded lattice and then uh, various rules. Uh, these are these rules of the terms, for example, A and A, these are, uh, is a term in the algebra, and then we have this binary reoperation. This is the error, and so the the error maps a and a to a implies a. So this is another term, and then there are some laws. For example, that this equals one, and one was the top element of the lattice, and zero was the bottom element of the lattice. Uh, I sh had shown you that there's this uh, boolean function Wikipedia picture, which is very nice that I used to explain some of these relations. So the, we had this, the strongest um, proposition, if you will, at the bottom, the weakest one uh, at, at the top, and then uh, these, these chains of implication that the, then is also like internalized in the, in the, this interpretation of the binary functions inside of the lattice. So we had we had said it, right? If you have proven the false statement, then everything just follows. If you have a, uh, X and Y, then Y follows, for example. If you have Y, then Y or uh, X follows because Y is just like a, a stronger statement than just saying uh, X or Y. And so here we had this picture with uh, zero, one, two, three uh, terms. And I will use this language interchangeably in this video again, like terms, I say terms, but you can also read them as propositions. And um, we, we had talked about intermediate logics, right? So if you, the starting point is intuitionistic logic, where you have uh, just a few um, uh, logical propositional axioms, uh, where the theory can prove various statements, and then you might add um, various other axioms and uh, there's a, a sort of a tower infinite tower of uh, propositional theories and at the top then is uh, just classical propositional logic which is when you just adopt the law of excluded middle and then all this in between uh, logics that you could adopt uh, axiomize uh, are do also like ours included in this strong classical theory Okay, that's about what I will say in, in uh, repetition of the, this video from two weeks ago. In this video, I really want to talk about um, negation as I already did in the video from five days ago on a topoi, right? I talked about uh, how, uh, if you have a generic topos, how uh, the notion of uh, negation, and we talk, even talked about the, quantifiers and these kind of things um, pop up um, as, as a like uh, indirect an analogy to logics in this category theoretical framework. And the, the topo is related, as I have already also said in the last video, to hiding algebras in that the, um, the set of errors from the terminal object to the uh, Subobject classifier object form a heading algebra, and the heading algebras give semantics uh, to this the, the logic of subobjects. Um, and uh, th this was also the original motivation for making this video. Sorry. Um, okay, uh, but this video will more be, be will be more down to earth than talking about topoi. Uh, I will just talk about negation. And so in this video, I sort of just want to wrap it up and I will state a lot of statements as, as sort of facts. The aim of it being that we get a feeling for um, what uh, negation can be uh, or rather what it cannot be, right? So even if you don't have statement like P 
Peace law or law of exploded middle. It's not like that in these logics, there is not some structure. Indeed, the fact that we're talking about this lattice with these rules suggests that it's still a quite structured uh, sort of system. And so we want to understand what logic can not be or what statements uh, in intuitionistic logic are already true about negated statements, for example, right? So it's it's not completely up in the air, uh, even if double negation doesn't automatically reduce um, to just identity. Um, there are some rules that follow from, we can say, from the algebraic structure of this heading algebra. Okay, so um, uh, with that said, uh, let's get into it. So, okay, so finally, I, the thing that I ended with last uh, week, so I, I, I motivated the some of the versions of axiomatizing the heading algebra. And I listed some of the statements, right? So the, the sense in which sort of the, 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 the propositions that correspond to the terms, to the vertices in the algebra, um, capture uh, our uh, the logical interpretations and they then enable it to become semantics. Um, become, for example, uh, this truth value algebra of, of uh, a logical theory. So we had uh, like uh, this uh, such statements that if X is below Y, right? And we had just said that uh, being lower down means being stronger in the sense that it, it things are implied upwards, right? So uh, again, um, did I close it now? Yeah, sadly I closed the picture, but um, X and Y was lower than, than Y because there's this upwards implication. And so um, the, uh, the internal <laughs> the structure, um, the, 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 the expressions capture uh, also what's going on in the outside. That there's a coherence in that sense that, for example, uh, X being smaller than Y uh, is true exactly then when this term x implies y, right? This is another term in the in the algebra, um, is already uh, the, the trivially at the top, right? So um, by um, by finding uh, that this implication is the the true truth value, um, we um, also simultaneously like experience then that. Um, x as a term as a standalone term is below y and and the other way around and uh, so I, I motivated the whole thing by uh, saying that you know we have modus ponens in this sense right so if x is a term y is a term and z is a term then y plus z is a term and x and y plus z is a term and this is then the same actual term uh, then, then set, and you see here this is the sort of uh, modus ponens um, relation. If you think of this, this equality, which is the equality of us doing the algebra, uh, is read as a sort of um, uh, entailment. Um, and we have currying, and so there's this, this, there's this interplay between this lower relation and the implication, right? This is what, what it's all about. Okay, so um, good. We have this lattice. We have. Uh, join and meet or end and or, and the hiding algebra is defined by the fact that there's this, this uh, implication operation on these elements of the algebra. Um, and then S is customary also in, in intuitionistic logic. Given that and given top and bottom elements, we can now define negation. Um, and we uh, define it as a, a unary operation that maps any term in the algebra somewhere else. So, Right, you you think of this grid, this this lattice, this is full of terms, and the terms we can also think of as propositions, and then we have this unary operation that if you apply it to any um, element, then we will get we, we will get uh, like moved around on the lattice, right? So for example, um, if we have something, if we have zero at the bottom and we apply the negation to it, then we are actually mapped to the top, right? So there's this jumping around, and negation is something that that moves you up and down. Um, and the question is, uh, what are some rules that even intuitionistic logic uh, must fulfill about negation, right? So classically, we know, for example, that double negation is, is just the identity, right? So that would then say that applying the negation twice is 
it's giving getting you somewhere and then getting you back again to the exact same place right this will not hold exactly anymore but similar properties do hold um so we, i will like now go through a bunch of statements there and they are like stated here as algebraic statements of this partially ordered structure but they also can be read then as statements about any intuitionistic logic plus uh, possibly some other axioms and in particular also classical logic of course um, are logics that fulfill these okay so um, yeah we have uh, the this relation between uh, the, between smaller and this, this implication, right? If you say negation, then negation is now also an implication by this definition. And um, so if we take look at, at this thing, translate it, for example, then we get uh, this statement, for example. So uh, x being smaller equal zero, right? Zero is already the bottom. So this is basically saying x is, is like uh, just wrong. Um, it's the same thing as saying that, that the negation of x is true right this is if x is so, so far down then negating it indeed brings it very far up again as well um and then similarly right this uh, all this 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 is then again like the similar similar to this modus ponens statements right now statements involving uh order relations and implications this is what the heading algebra is about. Now that we talk about negation, which is also an implication that has something to do with these order relations as well, and I will want to list some facts. Um, uh, but to get this through in uh, in under half an hour, uh, like I will not step through through any of these uh, in in super uh, strong detail, and also I only list a few just to get a feel for for this relation that holds in any intuitionistic logic. Um, but I also want to warn you, by the way, like, I, you know, I, I mostly picked up the things that I wanted to say and um, don't quote me on uh, on all uh, the relation, get some some book where you have them all and not just one. Uh, don't, cite, don't cite me from this because I just quickly put this together to make this video, right? And it's very easy to make the, some some uh, some mistake with smaller uh, equal and so and. Uh, smaller and these implications in various directions um, so this is a warning to you it's not like I, I can look at all the statements and be certain about about the true value like as if there were some arithmetic statements um, okay um, yeah uh, okay but nevertheless let me uh, nevertheless motivate some so for example here we have the statement that um, that this uh, this statement yeah, this is an algebraic statement in the sense that that this is an a term in the algebra then this 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 object is a term in the algebra then us doing lattice theory uh, we can speak about terms being the same so this is this equality here is a statement that we make and then then uh, even more so then i make here a statement about an equality of uh, on uh, of some terms being equivalent to some uh, quality inequality about some other um, terms. And so there is various levels of log logic involved, right? If you if, if think of terms as propositions, but now I'm doing sort of meta logic, right? We, we're dealing with theories here, so don't get confused by that. But okay, so uh, this is saying that uh, it is the case, it's true, right? It's, it's on the top that uh, not x and y right logically this would mean that at least one is false and then in, indeed we have this sort of equivalence we, here it says then that um, x implies already the statement that uh, not y right and uh, logically like it's 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 reasonable because not uh, x and y being true um, this, what is a, uh, a situation in which this um, is the case? Well, if it cannot prove uh, those two statements, um, uh, like at least one. And so given one, then this certainly implies that the other one uh, is is false. And this is here expressed internally as saying y leads to, to zero, right? And so 
uh, we have here then um, a relation of terms like you, you must think of them as this x and y's or x and not y being ordered through this 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 logic right so the 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 the, um, the logic aligns all these statements in in in, certain, in some sense and already in the last uh, week I, I showed you this this image here right this is this freely generated um, uh, lattice of one uh, of one statement so we're here this is these are all these these sort of statements that we can build with just one atomic formula p and here you we see the uh, this this strange relation right we said that Absurdum is like strongest relation, applies everything if you adopt the explosion. And then, um, for example, it implies not P or P. Um, and But they, they, these are like on, on, on the same level, sort of, right? They are like, um, if the system is consistent, then P will not imply not P and so on. Um, but uh, both of those individually, these statements uh, imply then that either is of them is true and so on and so forth. And here we see, for example, double negation on the, on the same level sort of as the, um, the uh, lem for P um, and and so on and so forth. We will see, for example, I mean, uh, this statement is, this, this relation is, for example, also clear, like if you have not not P, then you have not not P or something else, but this is clearly weaker. Uh, this then is, is less, obvious but holds also like this is some relation between or and and implication here um, whereas uh, this is also easier at least as we will see in a second how like uh, this statement with p uh, will be stronger than the one the similar one with this this with this p here double negated and so on and or is of course commutative um, Okay, so here we have uh, some relations. Again, I, like, I'm stressing myself a little bit, but I, I don't want to talk an hour about uh, basic algebra. Um, there, there can be a situation where you have a statement in the intuitionistic logic or in this, uh, in this algebra where the uh, double negation is indeed the same as uh, just, just x. So this is, for example, the case for the true statement, right? Uh, the, if you negate the true statement, you get the false statement. If you get the false statement, you get the true statement. So these, these extremal uh, propositions or extremal elements at the top and at the bottom, um, they are actually, if, if you if you mirror it twice with the negation, then you come back where you are. And in this sense, they are regular, like regular in the sense that they are like classical. Um, also here in these logics. Um, and the statement that um, that uh, the, the statement that that um, x implies not not x uh, is true. We could give a um, intuitionistic uh, proof of that. Uh, I prove here something a little bit more complicated. Even uh, the statement that if you have um, not x then you get not 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 x okay this is the simpler case with a special case of the one that i just said but actually you also can go in the other direction even in this weak lo weak logics right so free negations even in this systems that we discuss here it's not that it can be anything free negations actually collapse to just one negation and the proof is here so if you don't know lambda calculus then uh, this might be a little bit overwhelming but uh, what I do here is, uh, I first I, I unwrap it uh, again, like the negation is this implication as we just defined, right? We, we said negation is actually just the implication into the bottom element. Um, and I actually prove something strong. I prove this general statement, right? This is uh, a logic statement of only implications. And this is constructively uh, true. And this is this term here, this uh, like sequence of functions. Um, this is actually then the proof. Uh, if you know the um, uh, Curry Howard uh, interpretation, then you can read this as a type of generic types. Like this is a, a, ty a type of a function type involving some generic types P, R, and Q. And then you just need to write down a function that fulfills this for even a generic type. And then that's the proof. Um, and so given that, we can take R as zero and Q as zero. And then we are left with the triple negation of P implies the 
a single negation of p, which is corresponding to this statement. Um, yeah, and that means, uh, for example, like it, let, imagine you you like you view negation as a unary operation, and you take the whole lattice and you apply negation to everything. Uh, of course, this is the negation is a, a unary operation on on this set of terms, so you get mapped back into the the set again. Um, so you get ma mapped uh, in general into a subset of it, and the funny thing is that that what you got here now. Like the, the image of applying negation to once to everything, all these elements that you got now are actually fixed points then of the double negation. So one, if you consider the things that have be, been already negated once, then all of these elements, if you negate them twice, they are they just stay the same, right? Because triple negation is just, just single negation. So this is a statement. Uh, this I want to emphasize that the interesting thing is that this is a statement about these logics that hold. So it's not it's not like that nothing is true in intuitionistic logic. We still restrict the the algebra of, of our of our thinking, if, if you will. Okay, and then I go on and list some other statements. So we have this, for example, this like corresponds to the contraposition, for example, right? If if x is stronger than p, i.e., if x implies y, and then this implies that not y implies not x and so on. So, of course, I have my, my logic uh, lens there, not, not so much my algebraic one, right? And you can also think of this like, like okay, forget the contraposition. Now we think of it in terms of this lattice. We have this lattice here, and there are two generic elements, x and y, that without loss of generality, call the lower one x. And you apply negation, then this statement exactly says, that the, the positions flip, right? So what we have already seen with, with zero and one, that you get up and down um, with negation, holds true in general in this, in, this, in this way, right? And this is what, as a lattice, this logical operation uh, expresses. And then also without proof, uh, like I, I make the statement that this double negation operation, this is also behaves like a modality in many ways. Um, this double negation, um, can be pushed into uh, the conjunction, for example, and then also here you have you have this uh, this relation, right? For for example, uh, not a relation for just the negation of a conjunction. It's not part here, right? Okay, so regarding the conjunction, there's a, a double negation statement, and then there is this statement. But uh, as you know, in the intuitionistic logic, various statements that are classically true don't hold, but some do hold, and these are some. And then we can look at them and, and do algebra, right? We can then, okay, here, if you plug in, I think if you plug in y equals not x, and then you use these two rules, then you, you end up with this statement, for example. And, okay, let's actually take this statement and negate it uh, another time, then it, it will say not not at this uh, disjunction equals one, right? And then you see, for example, that for the regular elements, like it, let's say x is regular, and this statement is also regular, right? If, if, if you can kill off the double negations, then you see for the statement where that is regular and this, this disjunction is also regular, follows then excluded middle from double negation elimination, right? algebraically. You can can manipulate this in this way. If you know, oh, not not x is actually x, then you can cancel out these. And uh, then if you negate this whole statement, then it says not not not, something equals one and if double negation also holds for double negation elimination also holds for this disjunction then you have proven lamb for this statement and so on um, and then here again I list without proof uh, some of these uh, statements but but check them for for yourself right um, don't quote me again, again on them but it's, it's easily possible that I forgot the negation somewhere or something like that um, uh, okay yeah, um, I, I already discussed this this nice lattice. Um, I, I've never worked with this lattice in any way, but uh, I've already also read that if you do this for any uh, situation where you have more than one atomic proposition, like if you go with two negations, then this gets widely complicated, right? So this is an infinite lattice, and it has like this this on, on every level it has like two of these anti chains and this this uh, this levels there. 
Um, but if you imagine you have a P and a Q, then you can also form like P or Q, not P or and Q and so on and so forth. So describing this infinite lattice gets complicated. And this is also read, read, the thing that I read about this. Um, okay, and now we get to the, the part that I actually wanted to discuss, the, the more fun part. Uh, I like it in, in uh, for the reason that, you know, two or three years ago when I uh, discussed... Um, just uh, like, you know, sh I, I talked about SHA and so on. Let me quickly find these videos. I, I talked about hash functions and I implemented in in C++ and in Python. Um, I talked about uh, like really Boolean algebra and how it like, how to implement uh, addition in terms of, of bits and all these things. Did some videos about it. And the same sort of feeling of math that, that, that you have if you do this kind of things also comes back if you uh, do algebra with uh, these hitting algebras. In particular, if you want to like find functions, modeling, actually these logical operations, you know, on, on maybe on zero and one or on some other elements. It's, it's really fun kind of thing. So, okay, uh, now for examples of hitting, um Algebra. So at the, at the beginning of the last video, I already gave motivations, not only Topoi, but um, also more hands-on Boolean situations. These, of course, um, are those where uh, the everything is regular. Um, I will not discuss the, the, the things that they did. Boolean algebras, of course, deserve their own uh, video, but uh, or their own study. Um, but here we, of course, want to see the weird things that are different than the Boolean case that people are familiar with anyhow. So, um, yeah, he, here I do an implementation uh, in, in the spirit um, that I just mentioned. You represent your objects by, by something. You can think of a representation of the truth values as elements in some field, right? Maybe there are some points in the complex plane, very generic. Um, so that's what we do here. We describe um, a heading algebra that has three elements, true, false, and then something which is in between. You find the, um, the definition of the binary operations and or duplication also as an example here somewhere. Yeah, here exactly. So here we have uh, the basically simplest non-trivial two element Boolean algebra. So this is the simplest one after that namely the one with one in between truth value and here um, this is taken to be like represented by one half but we will see in a second that the representation doesn't really matter um, and so if you cross out these one half situations right if you like ignore the the in between for a second then you will see this is just the, the other two elements they just make up for boolean algebra the not and and uh, the true and false uh, still behave like they do in the, the classic Boolean situation and all binary impl implementations on computer stuff is uh, still there. For example, here you see um, false and false is false, false and true is false, true and true is true, uh, true, and, true and false is uh, false. This is the same situation here, right? Um, since this is a symmetric uh, operation I only would have to read the upper half really um, and of course this has a representation uh, that you might know if you know some uh, computer implementation stuff so you can uh, implement the boolean um, and if they are represented by zero and ones as it, it is done here by a multiplication right so one times one multiplication as, as it is as you find it in the real numbers let's say is one but zero times anything is zero and so um, this is the, the, this classical case and also here like you know the, the normal implication as it is modeled the material implication as it is modeled with zero and ones behave as you would expect for example the only case where a implies b is false is the case where a is true but b is false this is like, like this absurd situation okay so uh, but now the interesting case is that 
the one where you look at the element in the middle. And my point that I want to drive home here is that right, we have this structure called the Heitinger algebra that has some axioms, and it's not that we can like assume any um, rules of logic for this middle true value and expect that they fulfill um, this, this, this heading situation. Or we can also say that there are a logical, logical uh, semantics for a constructive theory, right? There is some restriction that, that that's what I want to drive home here. Uh, in particular, like we could look at these implications and the more complicated binary uh, operations, but l let's just look at the negation, for example, right? So a priori, like if we don't think about it too much, then we might uh, like be on the fence on what the negation of the middle value should be, right? If you say like casually, well, the middle proof value means um, unprovable, but but uh, might be true, might be a, uh, like might be uh, adoptable as an axiom. Then what does it mean to negate that, right? And you say it's not the case that I can uh, adopt it as an axiom, if you will. This one reading of it, or or let's say you interpret the middle value as uncertain, then what does, what, what does not, not the uncertain value mean, right? In which direction should it go, if any? Um, and as you see here for this free valued uh, heading algebra, the point is that the negation of the middle value is actually zero. So, right, so um, maybe you would have grokked this by yourself, but following the rules, uh, it turns out then that the consistent way to say it is that you say the middle value, if you think again of the lattice, false, true, and the middle value. If you negate that, then you are just the new first actually kick down. And uh, since the negation of the bottom value is true, after that you kicked up, right? So here you here you see uh, implicitly like once you do it once, then you are in this stable situation. Um, but the maybe surprising thing is that that uh, to make this work here, we don't say the negation becomes the true value first, right? Not unproven, is not, it doesn't go up, but goes down first. So this is what I want to say here. Um, okay, and so uh, uh, that said, we now look at how would we actually realize this sort of system with three values. Uh, in the same si similar spirit, then we do in a computer algebra system where we said, you know, we, or we can say, um, end is multiplication of zero and one, uh, and or is addition more two or something like that. Um, and uh, if you have seen the videos from, from me two years ago, I already made the point there that the representation does not really much matter, right? So apart from maybe a division by zero being disallowed, you can basically choose any values, right? You could, you can say, uh, take uh, represent true by seven and represent false by 15. And then you can do, you can come up with binary functions, maybe not surprisingly, even polynomials that exactly implement and or negation and so on and so, and so forth. And we are going to do the same now with these three elements, right? So we have uh, these three values that I will generically call false, um, middle and true. And the only thing that I want for this sort of representation is that they sort of behave like field elements. You can think of them as complex numbers. Uh, and then it turns out, for example, that I can represent the negation, where the negation is this unary operation of, of any x, x can be one of these three values, as false plus true minus x multiplied by this fraction. And you can then indeed see that it fulfills exactly uh, these rules here. Um, but even more generically than on the Wikipedia page, because there they use zeros and ones. I don't even require that. But it's, it, it's still true, as you will see. So for example, if you say not false, right? N not of this uh, of this value, this function um, used applied to the false value, what happens? Um, well, so this is false plus true minus false times middle minus false false, um, and I'm running out of power, that's not good, um, middle minus false divided to middle minus false, well, this cancels, then what's left is false plus true minus false, well, false again cancels and you're a true, so negation of false is true.
right? And the same, you can do the same thing with the other values. Let me sh shortly um, plug in my power cable. Um, okay, so let's actually do it because I like it. <laughs> Even now you had the time to actually look at it, but uh, I really enjoy this sort of very basic rational polynomial situation. Okay, so negation of true. Well, if you plug in uh, t here, if true, then it says true minus true. This will be zero in our field model. So this whole thing is uh, gone and you find that negation of true is just false. And what is the negation of the middle term? Well, this is exactly constructed to make this work out like on the Wikipedia page, right? It should, should go down. And this is also what happens here. So if you plug in M, then you have here M minus M. This is again gone. And uh, you are left with false. So this works. Okay, so... Um, is this correct? Oops, this is this is the wrong way around, obviously. Sorry. So So true is of course the top value, and then comes um, uh, the middle value and then false. And this situation is not symmetric because uh, these, these middle values are like this, like this, like the law of x to the middle, right? You might not be able to prove it, but you can also not, you find you cannot reject it. And at the same time, you can also adopt them. So this is uh, the situation that you can, you can push the middle up, if you will. You can take it as an axiom. This is expressed here. It's legal that you make m equal to true, okay? And uh, so, so what happens then? Um, okay. Oh, okay. First, I actually give a, a more um, more hands-on representation. I, I look at the situation that. Uh, False is represented as zero and true is represented as one. This is the situation that we have here on this Wikipedia page. Uh, what happens then is then this rational of polynomial simplifies and you get this thing. Um, and okay, the same holds. Okay, now but now uh, the, the case that I just talked about. So let's say we adopt M. We adopt like all these uh, the propositions that like now in model theoretic speech, okay? Um, all the propositions that previously we uh, had on the middle level where we didn't know uh, whether or not we wanted them, or we, we, we couldn't prove them, okay, but now we, let's say, now we actually push them up to true, we adopt them as an axiom, if you will, the, the, the propositions corresponding to this middle value, then uh, T becomes, um, T becomes M, right? And so if we do that, then all these M's are here uh, like replaced with a T. And so we get this thing. Suddenly uh, T minus X appears twice. So again, here this was T minus X was already here once. Then it's, it's there a second time. Um, and this thing uh, then actually reduces to to this this polynomial like if the values as a polynomial or rational of polynomials where the values can only be t and f this is actually equivalent then to to this thing right so if you plug in t then this falls off and just the same as this if you plug in f then uh one of those cancels and you're left with a t and so this does actually the same job um and then okay of course we can be like go down more we say we plug in uh, particular values and we get down here the same thing was also true here right if you said here m equals to t i.e if m equals to one as well then this will just be one minus x in brackets 
uh, squared, but if the values are only zero and one, then uh, every element is uh, idempotent, and this is the same as just x minus uh, one minus x. Um, okay, I talked a lot about already like this in between logics, at least in my, my analogy. If you go to the Wikipedia page, they give this example of, um, for example, this. Uh, the situation where you have a p, for example, like so, some imp implication that you can read off immediately from from uh, this this sort of calculus of a, with the middle value. If you have some statement that you assign, think of assigning it the m value. Uh, this goes back to the last video where we talked about squashing theories into these algebras. Then, uh, just from the rules of implications, like just from following these rules here, you will find that um, if you have p equals to to m, then this expression, like p implies q implies um, q implies implies p implies p. This is actually um, uh, Pierce Pierce law, uh, also like a one uh, weaker non-constructive uh, statement. Then this simply evaluates to the same true value here, right? Just from doing the algebra in this in this situation that I just described. So you can use this then to reason about th these theories, these theories of theories, if you will. Um, okay, and that's pretty much it. So I end up, uh, I, I started listing some more, more statements, but if you want to get into the lattice theory, which I guess you should, but uh, not going to do that here. Um, yep, yeah, as always, uh, this text is uh, in the description. Um, and with this, I wish you a good night. Oh, by the way, did I talk about my my uh, very cheap Christmas decoration? I thought I I give you a little bit higher production quality, although it might actually make everything much cheaper. Just got this for free somewhere and thought to hang them up. They have a little bit more to show. Uh, okay, take care.